It's time for 28mm World War II action. Will you recreate history or reshape it your way? On the Bolt Action Hub at beastsofwar.com. Keep your blaster handy, the West is a dangerous place. Fight to survive as men turn to monsters and the dead rise. On the Wild West Exodus Hub at beastsofwar.com. So, hi guys, myself and John are back. Time for some hordes. Hordes! This is the faction I'm going to take for our Tale of Two Gamers. Yes, you're taking Scorn and I'm taking Kador. Yes, which means I get to be a bit of a get because I get to use the Horde's uh, Fury mechanic instead of your Focus mechanic. And what is the difference? Right, your uh, Focus mechanic. For every point of Focus you hold on yourself, you gain an extra point of armor, right? Mm -hmm. For every point of Fury I have on myself, I can basically burn a point of Fury, transfer all the damage you've just done to me, mm -hmm. to one of my War Beasts. Okay. So it's, it's quite the change. Yeah, yeah. So instead of boosting myself, I'm passing out the damage elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But we'll, we'll get straight into it. This one's opening easier than the other. So, instead of the War Machine rulebook, we get well, Horde's rulebook. Obviously, this is Hordes. Because, yes, this is Hordes. This is Sparta! No, this is Hordes. Okay. Get home with it. <laughs> we also get our two handy little battle box and beyond sheets. So we have one, which will tell you a couple of other armies you can have, which are quite cool. Yep. Uh, some other stuff on the other side. Yep. We then yep. have ticks, trips, blah, 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 words, things, stuff. Trips and ticks. <laughs> you jackass. <laughs> Tips and tricks for the army. So it gives you a nice little rundown on what everything's going to be doing. Yeah. So, so you remember when you're looking at this sheet, yeah. the stuff in red is the stuff that you will have to get on top of what's in this box. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I like that because it means that you're not having that moment of, okay, well, I've done this now. Where do I go from here? Yeah. So you, you've had this all in one army box. You're happy with it, but you want to... Customize yeah. it a little bit. Yeah, customize it or move on a little bit. Yeah. So let's start getting everything out the box. It's a lot of stuff in here. Yep. Which is what I love about these all-in-one army boxes. It's one a one-stop shop, and you get a ton of stuff. Mm -hmm. So let's start off with our warcaster. Okay. Our warlock. Here. Warlock. It's not a warcaster this time. Yes, it's a warlock this time. Can so you tell which game them. he plays more of? It's the one thing I hate since I moved back from England. I've not had War Machine players to play against. Didums. So we have the main body of our little Warcaster. What's her name? Oh, her name is <clears throat> Supreme Arch Domina Mikadra. Okay. Hmm. Uh, well, you were talking about cloth detail. Look up in around here. Yeah. A nice little layered effect in and around the cloth. Yeah. And there's so much scroll work in the scorn, which really, really sets them off. Mm -hmm. And again, it's <clears throat> the whole privateer press idea of, you know, a lot of segmented armor and mm -hmm. overlapping plates and stuff yeah. really does add a lot of detail. Um, where you necessarily would have cloth, but to be fair, if you had cloth further up here, yeah. it would be a lot more wrinkled and there might be a lot more going on in there. So they've, all they've done is actually just they, allowed you to not... They've kept it nice and clean. Yeah, it's not over complication, like that's what's important. Yeah, we then have her head. She's not pretty. I, s I say not over complication till you see the front. <laughs> yeah, but you see, that's where you get all the lovely scroll work and stuff. Yep. So you get a nice thin little wash in there. You know, you don't put thick layers of paint down on this. That detail is just going to shine right through. Yep, so this is why you don't paint it then. I don't, I will be painting it. So we have her face. Mm -hmm. She's quite scary. She is a little bit. On the, the freaky side of life. That, that, that's the point of the scorn. They're, they're yeah. very much into giving out pain to their beasts and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, the warrior spirit. We then have two little sheaths for her swords. Scabbards. Yes, scabbards. For her swords. For her swords. As you, seeing as you're doing that, we'll do the swords <laughs> bit, because I, I'm about to show you swords. Okay. She has two swords, uh -huh. which are sort of katana-esque. Yes, they are. Which are very nicely detailed. They are sort of the very elegant blade for delivering the most amount of pain possible. Yes, and then you again down the arm you have that nice segmented armor. Yep. Yeah, so when, whenever I come to painting these, there's going to be a lot of nice washes used just to really seep into those details mm -hmm. and then just touches of highlight to, you know, make it really shine. Yeah. And, I, and I must remember that the Tale of Two Gamers is not the Tale of Two Painters because I'm going to be criticizing my paintwork as much as yours all the time. I'm going to be like, I love how my stuff kind of looks and I'll look at yours and go, what have you done? Why have you done it wrong? 
Do it again. Why is it on fire? <laughs> oh, wait, that's right. I set it on fire. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, she then has a very spiky, spiky, spiky banner. A spiky banner? Spiky banner. It's not a banner. Yeah, it is. Goes is on it a back. banner? Oh, it's actually for a back. Yeah, see? Oh, I thought it was like another... <laughs> I thought it was like a... Do you know what I would have done? I would have taken one of the sword blades off and used that bugger as a friggin' mace. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, I'm going to hit you with my banner. <laughs> Okay, so on to her stats. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Speed 6, Strength 7, Mat 7, Rat 4, Defense 15, very good, and yep. Armor 17. So the armor on these is going to be a little bit lower than some of the Warcasters we're going to see. Yeah. Because this is the Horde side of things, we're not using tack. Yeah. We're basically a bit more medieval, a bit more brutal and beastly. Mm -hmm. uh, she's got her uh, Twin Swords of Balash, which are Magic and Power and Strength 12. Mm -hmm. She's got 5 Warbeast points and 6 Fury. She's got Elite Cadre Praetorian Swordsman. We'll get to those in a minute. Uh, friendly Praetorian Swordsman models gain Vengeance during your maintenance phase if one or more models in a unit with Vengeance were destroyed or removed from play by enemy attacks during your opponent's last turn. Each model in the unit can advance three and make a normal melee attack. Mm -hmm. So it's basically, you shoot me, I move toward you faster, and if I get into range, I get a free swing at you. Yeah. Which is nice. Cool. Uh, she's got Inspiration Scorn Models. Friendly Scorn Models slash units in this model's command range never flee and immediately rally, mm -hmm. which is always good. Uh, she's also got Stay Death. Once per turn, when a friendly living faction trooper model is disabled by in this model's command range, this model can spend one Fury Point for the disabled model to heal one damage point. So mm -hmm. basically, I can stop stuff dying yeah. once per turn. Mm -hmm. so say you've killed my big war beast. Boop. No, he's still alive. Yeah. That's cool. It, it means it's it's harder to get rid of stuff. Yeah. You know, you really, <clears throat> you really, really have to work at it. Whereas I'm with War Machine relying on my armor to do stuff and the occasional magic buff. Uh, yeah, I'm relying more on magical buffs and passing out and spreading out the damage. Yeah. Okay, so next up we have uh, Adeptimus Marcus. Jumping, jumping, reading, reading. He's really cool. Optimus. Optimus, fine. There's no D in there. Optimus, fine. No D. I'm dyslexic. Get up. Oh my, what's your point? <laughs> <laughs> I can still read. <laughs> I don't English good. Uh -huh. He's very nice. He's a very large model, isn't he? Yeah, he's very large. He's got this weird... I'm not sure, what is this puffy thing up around him? Is that cloth? Um, or is it hair? It looks like hair. I think it's hair, because I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the artwork here, and it looks like hair. Okay, then it's hair. Mm. He's got a magic weapon with reach, which is power and strength 11, but again, he's going to be a buffed character. So yeah. he's attached, so before the start of the game, he attaches to a friendly warlock. Mm -hmm. uh, Gatekeeper, this model gains one soul token for each friendly living faction warrior model destroyed in its command range by a continuous effect. An enemy attack or collateral damage. So basically, he's collecting soul tokens to fuel magic, I'm going to guess. Mm -hmm. uh, Ghost Shield, this model gains one armor for each soul token currently on it. Not bad, he's going to need that. Uh, soul Tap, while this model is in its Warlock's control area, its Warlock can spend soul tokens on its upkeep spells as one token of fury instead. Mm -hmm. So it basically means you can pay for your upkeeps but keep your fury. Yeah. Which is good. Uh, Spell Slave, action. Uh, this model must be in the Warlock's control area to make a Spell Slave <coughs> special action. When it does, it casts one of its Warlock spells at a cost of three or less. Oh, so he can start casting her stuff. Mm, okay. Very nice. Yep. I like. Give me the box. Yep. Okay, so we have... That's the big dude. That's the big dude. <coughs> Look, we've, we've got three options in there again. Yep. We're going to go for Moloch Khan. This is one character who has caused a world of pain. I've faced off against him a few times. Mm -hmm. He hurts like crazy. He's a character war beast. So I'm actually getting a character war beast in the all in one army. I like. Yeah. I think you'll like those. They're really big swords. With holes. They're holy swords. <sighs> you just can't do the humor as good as I can sometimes. I don't try. Oh, and I've missed one little bit, which is a wee horn. Sorry. What? Come on. Hush, bite you. Not saying anything. I don't need to say anything, do I? No, the community will say it for you, screaming at me. Get the box up and get the stuff out. Show us the pretty. Yes, get on with it. Go ahead. Show us me and body. Okay, so. He's nice. 
He's really big. He's huge. <laughs> A lot, a lot of detail well, going on. Well, he's a character-heavy war beast. Mm -hmm. He's 11 points. So he's quite pricey as well, isn't he? Character. Yeah. The, the fact is, he's a character, and he'll have a lot of special abilities. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, he's, he's mat 7, mm -hmm. which is brilliant. He's armor 18, which is pretty damn high. It's as good as a heavy warjack in yep. Signar. He's got... Oh, I believe he actually has Weapon Master on his Falchurns. So he has two of those, which are power and strength 13 with reach. Mm -hmm. uh, Weapon Master, I believe, is an extra dice somewhere in there. Sorry, I, I, we still have to reread the rules and get back into it. And then he's got a fair damage spiral on him as well, so he'll be able to take a fair amount of hits. Yeah. Uh, that's the other thing. Instead of having damage grid, like in War Machine... It's a spiral. We have a spiral, and instead of systems, you have body, soul, da-da-da. All right, okay. Which is different. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other thing that these have that yours guys don't mm -hmm. is an animus. Okay. Which is sort of a spell that my war beasts have that you won't have. Okay. So it's extra things that I can do. Right. Okay? Uh -huh. So like this, it's Fate Walker, cost two fury, range self. After all friendly models end their activations this turn, this model can make a full advance. Fate Walker lasts for one turn. So he can basically wander about the battlefield a little better. Yep. Ah, the swords. Needed to get the swords in. I like the swords. We get the swords in, and he has two banners as well. Yes, he does have two banners, which are nice and clean, so if you're good with your free hand, you can get some nice symbol work in there. If you're good with your free hand, or you happen to be Roman. Happen to be Roman. <laughs> uh, he's got Affinity Makedra. While in Makedra's control area, he gains plus one fury, mm -hmm. and he starts with four and a threshold of ten. Now, the threshold's interesting. Yeah. If I run him too hot... Say I run him so that he's got too much fury on him. He can actually turn around and start attacking my own stuff because he goes berserk. Yeah. So I, you have to be careful of that because instead of generate, just generating focus, mm -hmm. I have to be leeching fury off my beasts yeah. to actually keep them under control. Could, could you run him into something and then power him up to that point? You know, If you send him over the edge, will it, he attack anything near him? Whatever's closest. So you would actually be able to run him forward and power him up to hell and... Yeah, let, let, him, let him burn out. Yeah. The problem is, if you let him burn out, it has to take a while to actually get himself back and be able to use his fury to start boosting again. Because yeah. I have to rile him to actually so doing put that, fury on him. Doing that is a suicidal one-shot. You could do. It's a bit of a waste. If you're you going for a caster kill? If you're going for that caster assassination run, yeah, say the caster's down to the last few points and yeah. you know it's, it's say, what, 60-70% chance you're going to manage it, mm -hmm. you can sort of take it. You know, okay. He also has a uh, chieftain cyclops. While in this model's command range, friendly cyclops models can use its current command and thr in place of their own. Mm -hmm. So basically, friendly cyclops get his uh, threshold. Yep, which is very good. Uh, he's got future sight. This model can boost in attack and damage rolls after rolling. So I can roll. Oh, I just about missed it. If I boost this and get a two, I can do it. I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to take the risk beforehand. Yeah which is very good. Uh, he's got intuition and sidestep, but we'll not get into those just yet because we'll have our Tale of Two Gamers. Because yeah. Let's not get bogged down in specifics. Mm -hmm. So let's put him out of the Give me his box. He is nasty as hell when he's on the table. I have he been is. crushed by him a few times when I've had my signal out. <clears throat> Next up, let's go for the big box with our resin plastic. Mm -hmm. So this is your Titan Heavy War Beast. So if you take those and open them up, yep. I'm going to pop the three cards, because there should be three. Yep. So we have a Titan Cannoneer, a Titan Gladiator, and a Titan Sentry. So the one you're meant to get in the box is the Titan Gladiator. Or the, the, big one, melee the one you're meant to build yes. as per the rule. Yeah, now box. he's eight points compared to the other two, which are nine points. Right. So <clears throat> what you're looking for out of the weapons in this is the War Gauntlets and the Tusks. Okay. Okay, so you'll have your main body and then your weapons on top. Yep. So is Matt Six is armor nineteen. He's a heavy. He is a heavy brute. Mm -hmm. uh, tusks are power and strength fifteen. The war gauntlets are both power and strength sixteen, and they're open fists. Mm -hmm. So basically, two open fists. I can do throws and power attacks and stuff. Yep. But we'll get into that later as well. <clears throat> His animus is rush. Cost two, range six. Target friendly war beast gains plus two movement and pathfinder. So pathfinder lets you ignore terrain. Yep. To so say you had those uh, those widowmakers hiding in a forest, pathfinder I can still charge them. Yeah. <laughs> in we go. Uh, okay. Yep. Uh, he's got bullheaded. 
uh, when this model frenzies, which is whenever it goes over its threshold, yep. uh, if it would charge a model, it targets that model with a slam power attack instead. If it cannot, it frenzies normally. Mm -hmm. Ooh, so slamming is whenever you're knocking into someone and throwing them back. Yep. He's big. So <laughs> that's <laughs> trying to show off the parts here. Main body and legs mm -hmm. are um, huge. We need the tusks, don't we, for his weapons? We do. So that's his front. <clears throat> He's sort of like a big sumo guy. He does have a bit of a sumo-esque appearance to him, doesn't he? Yeah. Especially with that big belly plate. Yep. Uh, what weapon? It's the War Gauntlets. It's the War Gauntlets. So it's these things? Uh, yes, I believe so. Possibly these so things. I believe that's the War Gauntlets. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are the correct things for the Gladiator. Mm -hmm. uh, then so he's also have... got Grand Slam, mm -hmm. uh, which is this model can make slam power attacks without spending focus or being forced. Models slammed by this model are moved an additional two inches. So he's basically so big, so heavy. Yeah. Just knocking straight in. Uh, he's got hard head. This model can add this weapon's power to its headbutt and slam power attack damage rolls. Mm -hmm. That's very good. And it's also got follow up. When this model slams an enemy model, immediately after the slam is resolved, this model can advance directly toward the slam model up to the distance the slam model was moved. Mm -hmm. So basically, he can follow three. He's not just hitting you and firing you back. Yeah. Which is very useful. We we'll leave out the other two because I won't be building those. Yep. So what have we got here? We've got his head. We have his head which has a gigantic Wallace and Gromit grin. I don't, I don't know, it looks like someone's just put a big fan in front of his face. He's got a big smile on his face. He certainly enjoys his work by the looks on his expression. He's got a lot of character in that face. Yeah, there is. You know, and once you stick the tusks in there, he's going to actually look quite friggin' menacing. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm actually looking forward to it because normally I don't do teeth and gums on miniatures, but yep. because this guy's so big, it's going to give me a chance to work on that. Mm -hmm. You know, which would be very nice. Yep. Well, there's a lot of other parts lying around so that there's, there's yep. arm components. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll probably need the arm components. Yep. There's a few different ones. There is different arm components, which I believe that's the matching pair for the Gladiator, which are sort of the more armoured. Yeah, they're aspects. more armoured and they fit in with those... Uh, the head plates and the, the with these. gauntlets, yep. So the gauntlets actually have little uh, pegs in them. Mm -hmm. So if I find this correctly, yes, there we go. That will just pop in there and look yep. like that. So he's, he's very nasty looking. He is. You have to admit, he's very nasty looking. And he also he's has got really two little big... arms yeah. to go on with it as well. Oh, does he actually have four arms? He's four arms, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look so, at that. so even whenever he's punching you with the big arms, the little ones are probably just trying to stab you. Yeah. yeah. And we have the traditional scorn banner as well. Again, yeah. nice and flat, so we yeah, have plenty of room for it. It's quite an Asiatic looking banner, just for the style of it. You would almost expect it to be on a samurai's horse. Yeah, I guess they do have a sort of samurai esque feel mm -hmm. to the scorn. Yeah, they're uh, very, very nice. If the samurai were more giant zombie monster people who liked causing pain. Yes. Okay, so if you put him away, mm -hmm. we can move on to the Praetorian swordsman. <clears throat> oh, lots of bits. Tell me about the swordsman, Justin, or do you have to wait till we get the card? We have to wait till I get the card. Okay. And there's actually two cards in here, so it's... You have a possible ability of two different units out of this box, which is nice. Mm -hmm. So if you're good with your magnets, work away. Are you sure it's two different units and it's not anything else? I have two else? cards. And they're both units? They're both units. Okay. Yep, leader and five grunts, leader and nine grunts on both. Mm -hmm. Although the... Uh, Keltari are more expensive. Of course, they have double bladed glaives, which have reach and power and strength 10, compared mm -hmm. to the, the swordsmen, which have two swords at power and strength 9. Mm -hmm. Not bad, but they're both field lines 3, speed 6, strength 6, mat 6, rat 4, don't care. Defense 13, armor 14. They're quite nice. The swordsmen have penetrating strike. After hitting a warjack or warbeast with this model's melee attack, you can choose to have it suffer one damage point instead of a normal damage roll. Mm -hmm. So if you have a full unit of 10 of these guys, you could throw in a possibility of 10, of of 10 damage if yep. you could get everyone at it. Obviously, yep. it would take a bit of work to do. Uh, they've also got combo strike, yep. which means whenever they're in melee, it's the same as the combined range attack, which is good. Or no, it's not. Sorry, it's something different. Make a melee attack. Instead of making a normal damage roll, the power of the damage roll is equal to this model's strength tw and twice the power of its weapon. So you can basically turn it into a power 12, yeah. which isn't bad. Uh, the other guys 
<clears throat> I wonder what they have on the back. Oh, I would be very tempted to build them instead out of this box. Really? Yeah, they're just nicer. Blade Shield, uh, this model gains plus two defense against, re against range attack rolls. Uh, parry, this model cannot be targeted by free strikes. And reform, after all models in this unit have completed their actions, each can advance three inches. Mm -hmm. So they're technically speed nine. I, I don't know, guys. I, if, if I was doing this, I would probably build this other unit more than the Swordsman. Yep. But the problem with doing that is you're then breaking what Privateer has set up for the box. You know, because they'll have designed it that everything has its synergy to work together. Yep. So if you start doing that, be careful that you don't break your synergies and end up with something that's worse. Mm -hmm. So right. yes, that unit might be more powerful, but you might screw up the army. Move on to some parts here. So that's main body. Uh, main bodies. We have two or three of them. I think I've picked out two of the same pose. That was yeah, <clears throat> well played on my part. Uh, we have another one here, which is more standing. Again, detail is superb. Mm -hmm. Lots nice. of scroll work. Nice cloth, uh, segmented armor. Where do you keep seeing this scroll work? So sort of in round here. And then just in round the armor. It's just all the little details inside it. Am I, I'm probably calling it the wrong thing. Filigree, I would have said. Filigree, fine. Filigree. Same thing. <laughs> Don't Near enough. Near enough. Near enough. Shut scroll up. work has words in Shut it. Shut up. Pass uh, the weapons. Uh, we have a shoulder pad. Yep, and a because head. we love our big shoulder pads. You have the weapons there, by the way. Ah, I have the weapons here. Um, I didn't want to take too many out of the packet because we don't want to be losing any of these parts. Yes, because there's quite a lot of parts. There is. Since all the shoulder pads are separate, there's two per model. Yep. There's oh, I like these. A few of them in there. Say hello to the swords. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice swords. More swords. Yep, we then have these big bladed pole arm things, which are really cool. Is that for That's the... for the other unit. Yeah. So we have one unit with swords, one unit with the pole arm things, mm -hmm. which are very cool. I don't know, I'm, I'm tempted to build that other unit out of it. I'm probably going to... Uh, it's. Do, do you or don't you? Decisions, fact, decisions. Is there anything in the leaflet now? Possibly. Um, but they're a nice, straightforward unit. They're going to head up the table, get buffed, and just get stuck in. Mm -hmm. There is the R mentioned on the sheet, so... Mm. I'll, be, I'll we'll have to give that a full that. read through and then when we come back for our Tale of Two Gamers, I'll have read that, I'll have built it, and I'll be fit to tell you better. Yep. So, anything else we need to know about them or are we moving uh, No, on? that's they're just a basic standard infantry set. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay, next up, Kafarak Incinerati. I guess they might have something to do with fire. A little bit. Since it's incinerate. A little bit of fire. Uh-huh. Oh, they have... Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded weird, yeah. <laughs> when Sorry. Justin when Justin resorts to making guttural noises, you know something's good going on in there. Yeah. Well I mean like I like big heavy dudes. And these are some <laughs> big heavy dudes. Look at that. That is a lot of armor and a lot of cloth going on there. It's really nice. They they're like um man of wars without needing any tech to move in their suits. So. Yeah. Oh, you're getting Actually, Man of Wars done anyway. A full unit of these. And they're all pretty much the same whenever they come out the box. Yeah. Do you have to talk about the details while I get I all the parts out? I can't I can talk about the details because the details speak for themselves. See what I did there. I see what you did there. <laughs> uh, so we're getting six of the six of these guys in the box. Yep. Big, big shoulder plates. The oh. thing is that there's plenty of detail there. But it's not detail that is too small for an amateur painter or a new player or anything mm -hmm. like that. They're, you're not having to get to grips with anything that's overly complex. Mm -hmm. um, what is nice is that the cloth detail on these is in such a way that you can really get away with hard edge highlighting. Yeah. If, uh, if you, that's all you like doing, hard edge highlighting is a very good way to do with this. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of a wash, but uh, it won't take a lot of effort to get these guys to look good and really stand out. Mm. Oh, that's clever. Mm. It's done a little empty helmet. Is that how they... Yeah, because they can wear those, can't they? Yeah, so if I... If I pop this on, maybe. No. It's gonna break it. <laughs> it's gonna break it if he does that. No, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna try and put the helmets on right now, but they have little empty, empty helmets, so I'm yeah. guessing somebody gets one. You think there's enough in there for the I whole I think there, there's probably one commander in there who'll get it. Yeah. In fact, I'd say it's him. You think it's this guy? I think it's that guy because he doesn't have ears. Okay. Have a go. Okay. 
<laughs> Let's move the bodies out of the way. We I'm not these, sure. Which appear to be some form of rocket. Little little fireworks. Yes, little Chinese fireworks. Mm -hmm. uh, we have big, big shoulder plates, which are very nice. Mm -hmm. Again, with your scroll work. I'll agree. I'll agree, fine. <laughs> and we then have <clears throat> big axe guns. Axe I guns. I like axe guns. <laughs> The only way you could make an axe cooler is to add a gun to it, and that is apparently what they've done here. I'm sorry, I like that. It's not called an axe gun, is it? It's probably, <laughs> it's probably axe blade or something. It should be called axe gun. Uh, we've got a little samurai banner again for the unit commander, so mm -hmm. that he's easy to pick out. <clears throat> we then have the other arms for the axe guns. And we have these, which go across everybody else's heads, so little tiny banners for the guys that aren't the leader. Which are very cool. Cool. We then have these, if you mentioned the spike ship. No, no, no the spikes go on top the spikes of the, go onto the, the shoulders. shoulder plates. Because they have the little slot there for them. Yep. Which is handy. In there. And if I may. These are a multi-wound infantry. They are multi-wound infantry. Um, which makes them really tough to get rid of. Uh-huh. Uh, so the weapon is the Insidious. Insidious, right. And well, Insidious Blade, which I assume is the axe part of the axe gun. Yes. Things you had to say that. I'm, I'm just calling it an axe gun because it's handy. Yeah. Uh, the Insidious is range, uh, range 10, RF 1, AOE 3, par 12, flame. Yes. Fire! Uh, Very good. Is that the continuous flame? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. I think it's critical continuous. It'll probably say on the back. Uh, it says nothing on the back. It says nothing on the back. It says oh. nothing on the back. Give me, give me. Give me. Da -da. And Let's the see. Insidious Blade is par 4. No, sorry. What's POW? Uh, par. It's P plus S. P, P plus and S. S. Okay. P and S. Get it? No. <laughs> no, I don't get that. PNS 11. I... Whatever, whatever. They're reasonable. They've got combined range attack, and I believe that... I'm not 100% sure, but I think that might be the fearless symbol. Just there in the corner. Mm -hmm. But they're a big, hefty unit. They're hard to get rid of. It's six guys who are just going to rock up the field and just basically tell you, come at us, come have us. Yeah. Come at me, bro. All right, so... <laughs> You take all that across there. I will move all this away again. <clears throat> I will get the last box for this particular army, mm -hmm. which is something I've specifically saved to the end because it's kind of weird what they do. Right. These are your pain giver beast handlers. Okay? Yes. So they're a metal kit, but these are your healers. Your what? Healers. They... Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. so take this stuff away. I'm taking it away! So yeah, they're, they're nice little metal guys uh -huh. with little blades. And they heal you by stabbing you, is that right? No, they heal you by whipping you. They... They have whips. <sighs> That's the whole speed lit with Scorn. They are... pain worshippers. <laughs> Do I say it? Do I not say it? What? Fifty Shades of Scorn? No! <laughs> Don't you dare! So we've got... A couple of different sculpts in the them. box, which are very nice. Uh, I think we actually have four, no, three, uh, not sure. <laughs> Something sculpts. Something sculpts. They're old metal, mm -hmm. they're nice and heavy, so I like them. Yep. You have all the whips, and you get a half dozen of them. So if I get the other last little bits, <laughs> yeah. got, uh, don't break the table. I didn't break the table, it broke itself. <laughs> we have little daggers and the whips. That's the up. Is that other? Or that's their other arms. Yes, that's their other arms. Yeah. Because some have daggers, some cloth. have whips. Yep. The whole idea is they'll whip the beasts to rile them up, make okay. them more powerful, mm -hmm. and they'll also whip them to heal them. <laughs> I know it's magic. Shut up, <laughs> wizards. <laughs> yeah, uh, barbed whip is a power strength eight. They're a mat five. These guys are not for combat. They're here for their abilities. Yeah. Uh, they have anatomical precision. When this model's melee damage roll fails to exceed the arm of a living model hit, the model suffers one damage instead. So if if you really have to, you can do it. Mm -hmm. But with that map 5, you're not really going to be hitting too often. Yeah. But I suppose it's... It, we'll, we'll see. Mm -hmm. They have beast manipulation. A war beast can be affected by only one beast manipulation special action per turn. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm not going to be doing all of these. Condition. Uh, action, range 3, target friendly faction war beast. If the war beast is in range, place any number of fury points on or remove any number from it. Mm -hmm. So basically, if I'm running my beast hot, whip, take them off. Yeah. 
Uh, you've got Enrage, range 3, target friendly faction Warbeast. If the Warbeast is in range, it gains plus 2 strength and must charge or make a slam or trample power attack without being forced during its next activation. Mm -hmm. So basically I can charge it without having to pay the Fury. So these guys are all about the buff. These, these are these, these are, are the guys buff that character. power up your Warbeasts and send them off. Yep. The last one is Medicate. Uh, mm -hmm. Range 3, target friendly faction Warbeast. Uh, it heals D3 damage points. A Warbeast can be affected by Medi Medicate only once per turn. Barb Whip also has Inflict Pain. When it hits a Warbeast with this weapon, this model can place one Fury Point or remove one Fury Point from the Warbeast. Oh, so if I'm okay. attacking your Warbeast, say something's went horribly wrong, yeah. I can start putting Fury onto it. Yeah. So I've got six guys there, I could throw six Fury onto something and really and make it difficult for you to run it cool down. And what allows you, when you're taking the Fury off, is when they start to reach their threshold. Yeah, so... I run mine hot, these guys will take it off and keep them cool and happy. Yep. I'll hit yours and rile them up mm -hmm. to make sure they do the thing. Yeah. Cool. Know, to make them less used to you. Yep. So that's the scorn. We'll have to take it away. We'll have to bet into it. I'll have to read the rule book mm -hmm. because I've always played the War Machine side. I've not played the Horde side. So it's yep. going to be a little bit of a headbender. It's switch across. Mm -hmm. But we'll come back. Whenever we're ready to play. Yeah, whenever we're ready to play and we have the Tale of Two Gamers started and we actually know what we're doing. Bye, guys. Progress comes to a world of magic as science and the arcane combine to make marvels. Meet steampunk inventors and orc mystics at the Volsung Hub on beastsofwar.com. In a world controlled by massive corporations, a steady aim and split-second decisions are needed for your Megacon to complete its goals. Begin your missions at the Mercs Hub on beastsofwar.com.